Amy Koranik. Okay, recording is in progress. <laughs> I'm gonna let Jen kill this little blurb in front of my face so I can so I can see. Um, I'm Amy Koranik. I'm a brand ambassador for Sculpey, and I'm in the Sculpey Studios welcoming you to our um, creative classroom with Michaels. And I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining us. Um, I do want to remind you that if at any time you have questions about what I'm doing, please type it in the in the chat. And Jen is here helping me. She's she's so polymer clay savvy. She'll help us answer our questions. But if I get questions from you, it'll make me a better teacher because I can make sure that I am covering every important detail. Today we are going to be working with this cool multi pack. It's half Primo and half Souffle. And I'm gonna be talking a little bit about color mixing and about mixing the two, Primo and Souffle, to get different effects. And these are my favorite two clays for jewelry making because they are super strong. Also, here's what we're going to be making. Um, we're gonna focus on surface techniques. So this pair of earrings has a painted surface technique with acrylic paint. Um, this one has a textured surface treatment with one of our textures. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And finally, the third pair of earrings is this, this is my favorite, the super cool pair. Um, this is incorporating gold leaf into the oven baked clay and then surrounding these really cool uh, metal elements with the oven baked clay. So please ask questions as they come up. And with that said, I'm gonna slide over to my workstation and get us started on the project. So taking a look here at the multi-pack, and for some reason I'm, here we go. I've got it face toward me. I'm just gonna open this up real quick. Um, you don't have to watch me unwrap clay, I've already done that. But I wanna show you, you get um, 12 bars of, of souffle and 12 bars of primo. And what is so cool about that is that, um, the souffle has this beautiful suede-like finish and the Primo has different, um, it has metallics, it has pearls. And so when you combine the two together, you get some really cool looks. So I need this one here. This one is rose gold glitter Primo. And then I have igloo, turnip, um, pumpkin, and cherry pie in all souffle. And so we're gonna use um, the rose gold glitter to add just a little bit of sparkle. This is the color that we're going for and we're calling it coral, but um, hopefully you can kind of see those little sparkles in there. And I wanna show you how um, I divide the clay and how I write, I do this and I give all this information in the instructions that I write. So these are all um, one ounce size bars. And what we need from, the igloo would be a 16th. So what I do is I cut this into what would be eight equal pieces. So that would be eighths. I'll just cut off an eighth right here. And then I'll cut that in half and I just need a smidgen of the igloo, one sixteenth. Um, the rose gold glitter, I need a quarter. So you can get your quarter just that easily, a quarter bar. Um, from the pumpkin, I need a quarter. So dividing in half and then dividing a half and half gives you the quarter and we're doing math now. From the cherry pie, we just need a 30 second. So I'm going down to fourths and then eighths and then 16th and then that gives me my 30 second right there. And so obviously the cherry pie is a really strong color and I just used it to kind of brighten my whole coral color. And the turn up here, I'm gonna use a 30 second. So now I'm at quarters and no, no, no. Yep, we want a 30 second of turn up too. And there's my 16th and there's my 30 second right there. All of that to produce coral. Now, if you want to, you could um, run these through a clay conditioning machine or a pasta machine, or you could um, use a roller. First thing I like to do is just get the clay working with my hands. This pumpkin color was really quite um, squishy and my rose gold glitter is a little stiffer and that's fine. So I'm gonna squeeze it with my fingers and then I'm gonna roll it on my work surface 
kind of force it down into a smaller bit that's easier to work with, like so. And that softens it up right away. And then these colors, I can even do several of these at once. So now if I want to, I can take my roller and really flatten this down. And then we'll load that all up together. This is the rose gold glitter. And then this is the, those other colors. You can just use your favorite method for mixing colors. Now the super cool thing about oven baked clay is that you can mix it entirely to make a brand new color or obviously you could stop at some point along the way and have just the most beautiful marbled and random effect. So it's entirely up to you. You can create your own custom palette by using different brands of oven baked clay, just like I'm doing. Um, both of these are Sculpey brands, but they are entirely different in feel and how they look on the surface when they're, when they're baked. I'm just gonna use my roller to kind of finish off my um, color mixing here. But look how pretty that is. That would be a beautiful project right there. <laughs> but we're gonna keep going and make a coral color. So if I just keep going and going and going, that will make this, okay? Now I'm gonna use my acrylic roller. That was color mixing 101 right there. I'm gonna use my acrylic roller and what I'm going for is a thickness of about one eighth of an inch. One eighth of an inch is the thickest setting on a pasta machine or a clay conditioning machine. It's a really good thickness for light element jewelry pieces and it's um, still a thickness that makes Primo and Souffle really strong. Now I'm gonna use my one and a half inch teardrop cutter and all I'm doing right now is kind of marking a field to make sure that I have enough clay here for two of these because I'm making a pair of earrings and I'll put my inspiration photo right, my inspiration pair right here. <laughs> All I need is enough to make those two shapes. And I wanna add my paint and just to save time and energy, um, I don't need to paint the whole field. I can just paint enough to cover these two um, earrings. So um, I'm using a glossy, finish acrylic paint. And the reason I like to use the glossy is because I like the little pop that it gives um, when it's on the surface of the clay. And I just shook my paint up real well. And I'm gonna use my style and detail tools. I'm gonna use the ball end to make these beautiful little dots. Now, um, you can also use the tip of a paintbrush if you want to. And you can just go right in here and just tap and lift. And obviously the more pressure you put, the bigger the dot will be. But it makes almost perfect little circles when you use a ball end or you use the handle end of a paintbrush, like so. You can use any acrylic paint on top of clay. Um, all you have to do is let it dry ahead of time, uh, let it dry before it goes in the oven but you can use any acrylic paint that you already have. As long as it's dry, it goes right in the oven with the clay and it looks beautiful. And the two respond really well together. Like um, the paint will just really bond to the surface of oven baked clay. So I'm gonna tap some medium sized dots now and I'm putting them pretty close together. but you can do as much or as little as you want to get the look that you want. Then I'm gonna finish up with this um, really tiny ball. This is the two millimeter. So I'm using the dual ended clay tools is what we call these um, to distribute some paint on my clay. I also like using these ball tools because they're so much easier to clean than a paintbrush. Not only do you get that perfect, perfect circle, but it's way easier, you know, for your cleanup. You can just wipe it with a paper towel or with a baby wipe. It's 
super neat and user friendly. And I've tried to keep all my design like kind of inside the boundaries of those two um, teardrop shapes so that uh, the clay all around the outside is still highly um, usable in, as a solid color. So just wiping up my tools. Now, don't let me forget, we need to come back to this one to finish it because we need to let that paint dry. <laughs> So we'll finish this one later. We're just gonna set this aside and let it dry. Okay, let's move on to earring pair number two. And this is a textured set. I hope you can see that beautiful texture. Uh, it has a post on the back and then it's got some dangly elements um, on the front. So this is also a custom color. And let me show you what that color is. This is sea glass souffle. I love that color. And then we also added igloo. So more igloo. We would need this much igloo, a half, an, a half of the bar, and then a quarter of the bar of the sea glass. Now, if you want to, um, you could, so it's two to one igloo and sea glass. You could use way more igloo or way more sea glass. You wouldn't have to blend it at all if you don't want to, but um, it's a really pretty color. I was just going for like a very muted tone. And so I went two to one with the igloo to sea glass. And these are both souffle, so they're very squishy and they're mixing up really nicely. So you can hand mix if you like, or you can run this through um, your clay conditioning machine, or you can do a combination, so. Amy, how long does it usually take for that paint to dry on clay? Um, it would just probably just take a few minutes, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, it depends on how thickly you put it on. So I'm, I'm hoping it'll be dry in about 10 minutes. I'd say that might be a reasonable guess, but I appreciate the question about the paint because there's one more caution I need to give you with the painted piece, and I'm talking about this right here. You do wanna make sure it's entirely dry before it goes in the oven. Because acrylic paint is water-based, if it's not entirely dry, it might bubble when it gets heated in the oven. And, and you probably don't want that. So make sure it is dry um, before it goes in the oven for baking. All right, and you can see how quickly that color mixed up. or um, you could even stop with the marbled effect if you want, because I think that is super pretty right there. But just keep mixing until you have a little sheet like so. And again, this is a sheet that I want to be about an eighth of an inch thick. And I'm going for um, I'm going for a shape of clay that is large enough to get these two elements out of. So. That is my largest cutter. This is what the cutters I'm featuring today are um, the circles and square cutters. This comes in a set from Michaels. And then also the, the teardrop set is available at Michaels too. And those are the shapes that we're focusing on. So this is the square cutter and I wanna make sure I can get two of these um, out of the sheet. And that tells me that my sheet is large enough. First, I wanna apply my texture. And so um, I have this beautiful, this is one of our Sculpey silicone matte molds. This is used for, you can fill this with liquid Sculpey and, and bake it in your home oven and then peel the liquid Sculpey piece out. But today I'm using it to create a texture. So what I wanna do is just put it upside down with the texture side down right in the middle of my clay. And I'm just gonna go at it with my, a lot of fingertip pressure to make sure that the texture is biting right down into the clay surface. Like so, and I can even see like, um, not bubbles, but like high and low places. And I know it's really biting in. And once I have a good, good bite, I'll use my roller to make sure I get that texture as deeply and as evenly as I can. So I use my acrylic clay roller and then I'll just peel it back. And look at that really beautiful, I love that lacy texture look. Then all I have to do is cut out my shapes and this just uses two of these squares and you could use your, take your time and use the square to like line it up and eyeball it and see what part of the texture you like best. 
I'm just kind of going with a random, um, a random cut here. And then we'll just remove um, all this. You could use this for other projects or you could um, you know, work it back up and save it for later. Now I'm going to, um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these into the diamond orientation that my finished earrings are so that it helps my brain process what to do next because I actually want this um, to be a diamond shaped earring, not a square. So voila, now we have diamonds. <laughs> so I love that. A lot of times when I use cutters on my clay, I'll go back and just kind of tap and touch the edges just to make sure that that cutter, um, you know, it's not like just a blunt cut. It has a really nice neat edge. So those look pretty. Um, next, I'm going to take um, the circle, the smallest circle cutter. So that's this little guy here. These cutters are so useful, such a great way to start any design project. And they have a rolled edge on one side that's safe for your finger, and then they have a cutting edge on the other. So make sure you get your cutting edge down for this. And I just eyeball that and um, try to make sure I've got it in the middle. The camera makes it look like I don't, but I, I feel like I do. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna cut out this middle shape of each one. Now, if it gets stuck in there, don't panic. Just take a tool and just gently tap it out because you don't wanna ruin your the, the lacy design that's on there as well. And that becomes the little button that's the top element of our earring. That's where the post is gonna be glued later. Okay, so I'm gonna cut the center out of this one too. And again, I'm just eyeballing it. And you're gonna to have to trust me because the camera makes it look like I'm way off center, but I know I'm not. And then that one's stuck again, so I'll just tap it out. And I'm just positioning this so that it looks as close to the finished piece as it can because that helps my that helps my eye you know look at what I need to do next okay then what I did was I used the smallest square to cut out these little bitty scallops and I thought that was so genius of me <laughs> so what I did was I lined this square up halfway I have lined the corner of the square halfway between let's say um, the north point and the east point and then I just removed that clay. And then I spun around this way and I've got my little, um, let me see if I can show you that. I have that little scrap of clay is still in there. And by leaving that little scrap of clay still in there, I can line up the depth of my cutter and make sure that I'm always removing the same amount. And I'll do this on all four sides. So forgive me if I get a little off, I'm trying not to get my head in the way of the camera and I'm trying to show you how to do this cool thing without um, blocking myself. Okay, so that one is done. I'll pop out that extra clay and then I'll just go again over here on this earring. Go right between the two corners as halfway as you can. I got that one a little off, so I'll just go back. You can use that excess clay inside the cutter to help you um, gauge your depth, or if you wanted to, you could measure it all out, whatever, you know, whatever works for you. And so now I've turned my diamonds into sort of kind of like these little plus signs. And I wanted to take that one step further and not have it be so um, rigid. I wanted it to look more lacy and scallopy on the edges. So then what I did was I took a tool and you could use this tool um, you could also use a tool shaped like this. Um, you just need something that has kind of a long end. And I just went in here halfway between the corner and that cut out scallop. And I just pulled the clay in toward the middle. And that created two more scallops. So now we've gone from square cut to diamond cut to plus sign <laughs> to lacy to lacy edge. So I really think that's pretty, pretty genius that you can just use these little tools that you have to keep manipulating the clay into the shape that you want. All right, and now those two pieces are good. I got my shapes all mapped out. 
The last thing I want to do is examine how the airing is going to come together after baking. And so after I bake, I need a hole here and a hole here for this jump ring to connect these two elements. And I also need a hole down here to connect my dangly elements. So I can um, make a hole with either this um, two, mil two, two millimeter ball. I could make a hole with this blunt point tool. Um, I could make a hole with the needle tool. So basically it's whatever your favorite hole poking tool is, just use that. You do though want to make sure that um, the hole you create is large enough to accommodate your jump rings. So you gotta know, you know, the size of your jump rings. Let's say you might have, um, this is kind of a typical size of a jump ring here, but sometimes jump rings are heavier and thicker. And so you just have to make sure that the hole you create can accommodate your jump rings later. You could also bake it with no holes if you have access to say a Dremel hand drill or some other pin drill or spring drill, something like that, that will create holes for you. Whatever you have at your disposal for um, making holes either prior to baking or after, um, that's up to you. Now I'll just transfer these to my baking pan. Those will go in the oven and you need to follow the baking instructions for souffle or for primo, which are the same. You'll want to bake these in, um, in, in a home oven following the baking instructions for this type of clay. And then when it's completely cool, it'll come out and I'll show you how to assemble. So let's check our drying paint real quick. See if it is dry and I think that that big bubble there and that one are not quite dry. So let's go on to um, the next set of earrings, which is the gold leaf type. And we'll come back to this yet again, okay? This is my favorite pair. I said that before. There's a lot of things about this that I just love. For one, it incorporates my favorite color, one of my favorite colors, gray granite. Love that color. We have more, um, we're using igloo again, and then we're gonna also use poppy seed in the souffle. So those are our three colors right there. And I'm just getting my, my mixture sheet out. So for the, um, for the igloo, we would use all of this that remains. So that is half the bar minus that little sliver that we used in another project. We'll use all of that. For the poppy seed, we're gonna use a 16th. So I'm gonna divide my bar into fourths, and then this would be eighths, and then this would be a 16th. So just a little black, poppy seed, I mean. I, sometimes I call it black, but it's really poppy seed. Everyone knows this. Okay, the gray granite is half half the bar because it's my favorite. So I got to have a lot of that. Okay. So what we do to achieve this really beautiful marbling here that we have is I'm going to shape all three of my colors into ropes to start, starting with my igloo. And when I make a rope, I always start with a ball first. <laughs> and now there, I've got a rope. I'll do that a little slower on the next color. So um, you can see the transition. This one is the gray granite. This is gray granite primo. Look at the beautiful speckles in gray granite primo. I love that. Can you see them? It's like pepper in there. And I love that because it creates a real randomness inside the color. And um, when you sort of mix it with the igloo and with the poppy seed that you're going to see, um, sometimes those little speckles just pop up in the most you know, unique and unplanned ways. So once I have my color, I can feel that it's becoming a really, really um, like consistent thick feeling all the way through. Then I know I'm ready that I can go first. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this into a ball. Hey Amy. Yes. Does the clay get hard if you have it out for a time? Okay, good, good, good question. So I've made a ball and now I'm gonna go into a rope. Okay, so that is a great question. Um, oven bake clays, um, they might get a little stiff, like 
to me, they get kind of stiff on the edges. <laughs> and so as I'm conditioning clay, I want to make sure that stiffness that's on the edges gets completely worked in. Now, it doesn't dry out, though, because of uh, oven baked polymer clay doesn't have it's not water based. So air doesn't affect it. But um, if you have it in a cold location, which we suggest that you keep it in a cool location. It might it might feel a little stiffer to the touch. And so you got to get warming it with your hands and warming it with your tools and moving it. So yeah, it, it's probably going to feel a little bit stiffer when it's just been sitting around, um, but it's really not. And it's still completely workable. Um, another thing is that when you, so I've got this really skinny black rope because in this design, um, I'm going to come back to that question, but I want I want to keep going. In this design, I wanted the black to be like a minor detail. I didn't want the black to to be the star of the show. I wanted the white and the gray granite to really pop through. So that's why I used way less of the poppy seed. Okay, so let's go back to that question about leaving clay out um, because the clay is not water based. You can leave it out. But what will happen when you leave things out that don't get touched for a while is they might get um, pick up dirt and dust. So what I did there was I made a twisted rope and then I fo folded the twisted rope in half. And now I'm going to fold that in half again. And I'm going to twist and go again. And what I'm trying to do is create sort of a marble effect. So back to the storage, if you leave oven baked clays out, um, the surface of them is a little bit it's not sticky, maybe tacky would be a good word, but it's gonna attract if you have pets in the house or if, if your house is dusty, like I live near farm fields, so I get a lot of dust in my house. Um, you don't wanna just leave it sitting out where it can grab dust, you know, uncontrollably. So you do wanna keep it like um, maybe wrapped in kitchen wrap or deli sheets. Um, something like that, just to protect it from dander, pet hair, and dust. Okay, I did that one more time, and now I'm just going to do it one more. I'm just going to go through the twisting part again, and look at that beautiful, beautiful marbling I'm getting. I love that. I love how the white is dominant, how the, um, the gray and the black are just kind of popping through. And I didn't really mean black, I meant poppy seed because everyone knows that is poppy seed, not black. <laughs> now to just continue marbling, I'm just gonna roll this up into a Nautilus. Now, please feel free to use your favorite marbling technique to get to where we're at right now. Everyone um, has their own style and way that they can marble clay. And I completely respect that. You do what works well for you. This is just one process that works out pretty well for me. I'm gonna get all these clays on my way. And now I've got like this really pretty marbled um, ball. And what I wanna do next is add my gold leaf. And what I generally do is I kind of add too much gold leaf. And then as we're making the sheets, it will break and crack apart. Okay, let's talk just a second about gold leaf. Gold leaf, um, this is called composite gold leaf. It also comes in other metallics. And this is very pretty much inexpensive because it's not real metal. This is composite metal. It's made out of some base metals and it's colored to look like gold or it's color, colored to look like silver. And really this is the best product for these types of projects because sometimes if it was real, if you went to the expense to buy actual real uh, metal leaf, like real gold leaf, it will actually um, tarnish, tarnish over time. It, it needs a little more care. And this composite gold leaf is way more, um, you know, uh, budget friendly. And so it lasts a long, long time. Um, you can get it in different colors. It loves to stick to clay. And um, it's just perfect for this application. So what I'm trying to tell you is that when you're working with oven baked clay, um, the cheaper the leaf is, the better. Okay, so I'm just randomly applying it to the outside of the ball. And you can see that um, the clay and it love to stick together. <laughs> and it also loves to stick to my fingers. So I'll just dab that one on here somewhere. And I'm gonna put my leaf away so that it doesn't blow away. 
and set that aside. All right, now what we wanna do, we've got um, kind of, you know, quite a bit of that leaf on there and it kind of looks like, oh, now that's overpowering the design, but you will see that it's not going to overpower the design when we get where we're going. So I'm rolling the ball to make sure the leaf is really stuck well. And there's a piece on my workstation. So I'll just pick it up like that. Just go ahead and pick this up. You can use that trick with glitter too. You wanna to keep your workstation clean and clear of this leaf and glitter. And you wanna remain in control of your, of your project. You don't want random bits from other projects you know, infecting the current project. So now I'm just kind of starting to patty it out. like so. And as you're pattying it, um, that leaf is gonna crack and make a really cool, really cool pattern. See how it all is starting to spread out? Because I'm spreading the clay out, it's taking the leaf with it. So that's why earlier I said, sometimes I'll apply way too much leaf because I know that this is going to be sort of the end outcome. So here again, I'm gonna go down to about an eighth of an inch thick. And I wanna go not more than an eighth because if we look at the side of this earring, it actually has, it's two-sided. I made these earrings so they're pretty on both sides. So you have like two layers sandwiching the metal piece in between. So you wanna be an eighth or thinner with this one because you don't want these earrings to be real bulky and obnoxious. And that is just, I love the way that looks. Um, you've got, you've got the tint of, Ooh, I love this side even better. Let's, let's take a moment to appreciate this. Look how cool that gray granite, that peppery stuff is. It's like coming apart and it's infecting the white around it and the white is infecting it. And you're just getting these such, such randomly beautiful areas that you couldn't create on purpose. And I'm really a fan of random and, <laughs> and slap happy and, <laughs> you know, kind of uncontrolled. I'm, I'm really a fan of that because, um, cause I love it. That's, that's all I need to say about that. I just love it. Okay. <laughs> So we made a lot more here than we probably need. So what we need for each earring is one of these um, big squares because we're gonna turn these into triangles and you'll have one triangle area for the front and one triangle area for the back. So pick out your favorite spot, maybe a spot that has a lot of gold leaf and cut that out using the square cutter. And then pick out another area that you really like and cut that out. Okay, now don't throw this away. You want to make lots more of these earrings and give them to all your friends and you've got a really great start right there. Probably had you mix up more clay than you need, but it, none of it goes to waste because it won't, it won't set up until it's baked. So you can use that for other projects. Okay, again, I am going to turn this in, the, in this format because um, that most closely resembles our finished design. And so I wanna, wanna have a focus there on where I'm going. First thing I'm gonna do is cut out the centers using this next down. This is the, you get three cutters in this set, three squares and three circles actually, that's six cutters. I'm using the middle one next and I'm going to cut out the center of the larger square with the medium square. So forgive my head if I get my own head in the way of the camera because I wanna get this really centered up nicely. And then I'm gonna cut that out. And then I'm just gonna pop this out here. I'll just set it aside for now and then I'm gonna show you what, then I'll show you what we're gonna do, okay? Cut the middle out of each one with your medium size square. and then remove that, okay? Now let's take a second and shape this back up. My clay is pretty soft, just this room I'm in is kind of warm and I'm kind of warm and my clay is kind of warm. So now what I wanna do is I want to, this is the way it came out 
So now what I want to do is turn it at least, let's say 90. You could flip it over, you could do whatever you want, but I want to put it back in there, not in the way it came out because that like multiplies the pattern that we have. And I'm just touching up these rough edges. And so this one came out this way, so I'm going to turn it. To a different angle. And this is just the simplest way to add more layers of detail. And I love that. Okay, so our finished design has this little cutout right here, and that allows the finding to show through. This is what the finding looks like, or the metal, the metal element. This is what it looks like embedded in the clay. And so I thought since it's so bright and shiny and mimics the look of our leaf, I wanted to have a cutout right here to really highlight that gold underneath. So the way I got that was to use um, the tiniest square cutter in the middle and remove that portion and that stuck in there. So I'll just pop it out, lining that up. So excuse my head if it gets in the camera and just pop those out. Look at those little cuties. You could totally make button earrings out of those, <laughs> post earrings or something. Okay, the final detail I did was to cut this whole thing in half, corner to corner across all the squares. Just line it up with a blade and cut it. Okay, we'll put these out of the way so I have room to work. Now I'm gonna bring in my uh, metal element and I'm gonna put half of this on one side and half on the other. So what I did was I lined up my triangle right with the top edge of that gold piece, like so. And then I'm gonna flip this over gently. And I really like how I have an area of clay sticking out along this edge and I have an area of clay sticking out here because what we want to happen is we want to sandwich that metal piece with the clay. And as long as the clay is sticking out past the metal, it will create you know, enough of a sandwich to trap that metal piece in there. We don't even have to worry about glue or anything. So we'll line that up. We'll start at the bottom because that's where we had the most clay sticking out past the metal. And I'm pinching that together. And I'm gonna pinch it together on the sides and on this side. And then I'll just go back with my finger and really smooth. Your fingers are just the best tools because they are, because <laughs> I said so. <laughs> just pinching that together and then smoothing it. Pinch and smooth, pinch and smooth. Look how pretty that is. Such an attractive piece and so easily made. Now for this one, um, I would like it if I had like a piece of paper, I'm gonna use this. Here, I'll use a piece of my leaf paper as an example. So this earring is pretty on both sides. And so when I lay it in my baking pan, this baking pan is shiny. So I wanna have a little barrier between the, the clay and the baking pan. Because if I lay the clay right on the baking pan, it will pick up that shine during the baking time. And I don't necessarily want it to be, you know, unevenly shined. I wanna stay in control of the finish of my clay pieces. So I'll use that little piece of paper as a barrier and that will keep my clay from picking up a shine from the pan in the oven. Let's do this again. We're gonna line up the flat areas of the triangle right with that flat edge of that metal connector piece. And I'm gonna tap it on there and then flip it over. I've got my, I've got my border of clay here and I've got my border of clay here. And this is a nice big border down here. So that makes a really nice um, sandwich for the metal piece. I'm lining up that, um, that tip first. And then once I have it all lined up, all I have to do is go back and pinch clay to clay and that traps the metal piece inside. Hey Amy, will yes. the oven change the color of the gold metal base? Um, putting it on? No, it doesn't. Here's a, I, I don't think so. So this one is unbaked and this one, I baked several weeks ago. 
So I really think it held its true color, don't you, Jen? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think. Okay. So and good, then if good they question. If you wanted to use glue, what kind of glue would you suggest? For okay. Them? If you wanted to use glue, um, like between the layers, I'm guessing you're saying, mm -hmm. um, you could use, um, you can use any white craft glue um, and like Elmer's or Aileen's tacky glue, but you don't want to get it in this area because that, I guess you could peel it back off later and probably that would be okay. Um, you could use that kind of glue. You could use a silicone glue between the metal and the clay, like E6000 or Goop. Um, but I'm not sure that company backs us baking it. I'm telling you you can do it because I've done it, but I'm not sure how that company feels about that. Is that fair, Jen? Mm -hmm. And also, I have also baked super glue or super glue gel. But here again, I'm not sure that company will support you baking their product. So I'm going to let you go <laughs> with that research, go head to head with those companies. But I'm telling you I've done it, but I'm not telling you that they support that. So. Okay, we've got two pairs of earrings ready to bake. And I'm gonna do a quick time check. And then we're going back to our painted earrings. And here they are. So here's our painted earrings. I'm gonna do a quick uh, test and that one is not quite dry. So, and I think that's because I put it on way too thick. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna blot, blot this off so I can show you how to finish it. Um, because I want to be able to finish this, but I think I just painted that dot way too heavy because I was just excited and overdoing it, which I have a tendency to do. <laughs> okay, but for the most part, this acrylic paint is dry on here, except for where I put it on too thick. Okay, forgive me for that. I'm gonna line my um, teardrop shape back up just the way I marked the clay to make sure, you know, I could get the whole thing on there and I'm cutting out my teardrops. This is the one and a half inch teardrop cutter. If you have this set, it's the third biggest cutter. So I'm cutting that out. I wanna make sure I got this one all the way down to the work surface. When I use cutters, I push and then I kind of wiggle when it gets to the bottom. And that's how I make sure I've got a nice even cut. And then even though I have a nice cut, I still go around with my fingertips and just feel it and make sure it's nice and neat. And there we go. Isn't that awesome that you can use acrylic paint on the clay? You can even use um, our silk screens with acrylic paint and get all kinds of fantastic designs, painted designs um, on the top of the surface of the clay. Um, what I did next was I used these really pretty, um, this is called, I think this was called pear shaped. Mm -hmm. And these are beautiful connectors that are available through Michael's. And I just wanted to use that to create a little bling. And so what I'm doing now is I'm lining up my teardrop shapes so that the tip of my teardrop is right in line with the tip of that um, connector. And then I'm gonna go back in here with a um, poking tool and make sure that, let's see if I can just tap it and mark it. And I really can't. So I just wanna line that up and then make sure that it's gonna look the way I want it to once the hole is poked. I'm using my needle tool to make kind of a fine hole. Anytime I use the needle tool, I go through one way and then back through the other. And that just creates a super neat hole. Um, when you poke through the clay one direction, you get kind of this little belly button of clay that sticks out the back. And if you go back in through the back, you'll poke that back in. Let me see if I can show you that better here. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and poke poke through, and then I'll use a drilling motion to poke through the clay, okay? Now, when I pull this out, there's kind of a little ridge of clay right there. And so in order to tuck that back in, I'll just poke through the back and do the whole thing over again. It's, it's just a tip that you can use to make really nice, neat, round holes in your jewelry pieces. And so if I line this up, I think that's going to that's gonna work out really nicely. So in this case, we don't have to bake the, our metal elements. Um, we just need to bake our painted ones. And um, what I could do is just go back in and fill that one in where I, I kind of messed that up with my fingertip when I was checking for dryness. I could just repaint that 
um, after it's baked, or I could even just do it right now. Let me show you what I would do. I really like painting on raw clay because um, the paint, the acrylic paint and the raw clay, they have this deal, this relationship where they love to stick to each other. And so once that gets baked on there, it's a permanent, it's a permanent bond. It doesn't need to be sealed or anything. It just, it's a very um, symbiotic relationship between the acrylic paint and the clay itself. So these go on my baking tray. Um, just follow the baking directions for, um, like I said, for Sculpey Primo or Sculpey Souffle. And um, when they're completely cool, um, let me give you some tips for assembly. So this pair is probably the easiest because um, I'm not gonna even take it apart and show you. What's great about this is the connector in this metal finding is in the right orientation to the ear wire. And so all you have to do is open up the ear wire and assemble it. And what I mean by correct orientation is they're, they're perpendicular to each other. The ear wire hole, the ear wire itself, and the metal finding, they are at perpendicular angles to each other. And that creates um, a really nice earring look because then when it goes in the ear, the art itself is hanging like, you know, across like right beside your face. It doesn't have to be viewed from the side. Okay, so for this pair, I'll just take this one apart and show you how I did that. Hey, Amy. Yes. Do the holes shrink when you bake it? So mm -hmm. once you put the holes in, will they close up? You mean like the clay holes? Mm -hmm. No, they don't. Whatever you do to oven bake polymer clay um, stays. It goes in the oven one way and it comes out the exact same way. So that is a super good question. Um, no, the hole won't shrink. Um, the clay won't shrink. There's no shrinking. There's no, there's no distortion. So let's assemble this pair of earrings again. So what I have is a jump ring and I like to use two pairs of pliers because I feel like when I use my fingertips, I have a tendency to mess them up. But if I use two flat pliers, so this plier head, this is a chain nose plier, it goes across the ring like that. And this one goes across the ring like this. And it's actually holding the two sides of the ring really flat. Now I have the gap in the jump ring um, up there at 12 o'clock. And so what I do is I spin one pair of pliers toward me and the other pair away. And that is the appropriate way. Let me, let me show you this from the camera angle. This is the appropriate way to open a jump ring is to open it side to side. You don't ever stretch jump rings open. If you stretch them, you'll ruin the, um, the tension that is built into them, you'll ruin that. And so you wanna open them side to side. And then when you close it, that tension is reestablished and it keeps the ring shut. So first thing I did was put this metal element on the jump ring. And then I'll put my clay element in front. And that was just the design that that we came up with here. Okay, now if I put my ear wire right on here, it will not be in the correct orientation because they're not going to be like, let's say if I put that on there, the earring is not gonna be um, perpendicular to the art, it's gonna be parallel to the art. So now that we've added this jump ring, we need to go one more jump ring. And I like to add a smaller one at this point, just put that on there. That turns the orientation of the art another 180 degrees. So I'm gonna close this up and I use my pliers again on either side of the opening until those two sides of the opening are, are exactly in line. And that reestablishes that tension I was talking about in the jump ring. So now my ear wire, will go on this smaller jump ring that we added. And I can either open the jump ring itself or I can open the wire um, on the ear wire, open the loop on the ear wire. So I just have to find which way that goes and it goes this way. I'll just open it gently. Oh, I must be opening the wrong side. Am I? I can't see the lights are so bright. I can't see what I'm doing. So you just open this ear wire and then put that jump ring on it. Now you always want the, um, you always want this part of the ear wire 
on the same side of the art. That's the front of the ear wire. And so you want it in line with the front of the art is what I'm trying to say. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so here I have it. What I was saying is this part of the ear wire, not the part that goes through the ear, but this part is the front and it's in line with the front of the earring. And then you want to super gently close that. Hey, Amy. Yes. Can these earrings get wet after they're baked? Will anything happen to them? Do you mean the clay part? Mm -hmm. The clay part, um, oven baked clay is completely waterproof. And so it can get wet. Um, now I'm using inexpensive jewelry findings to finish my pieces. So if they get wet quite often, they're probably going to tarnish. Um, but the earring, the clay is completely waterproof. And so it can, it can get wet. Yes. I hope that, did that answer the question? I think so. Okay. I'm going to do a time check real quick. 352. 352. Okay. So this pair, we'll just talk about how these are assembled. Um, this pair was assembled with an ear post on the back. And so that can be applied with either um, after baking, this ear post can be applied with silicone glue like E6000 or goop, and, or it can be um, applied with like um, super glue gel. Either one, whatever's your favorite way to adhere um, metal pieces to polymer clay, I recommend a silicone or a super glue. Do not use hot glue. Um, hot glue has this deal where um, for some reason it never actually bonds with the clay and after you wear it a few times, hot glue will just release and pop right off and then we don't want you to lose your, your earrings that you've worked hard to make. So this pair of earrings just has a heavy gauge jump ring from this hole to that one and that holds it all right in the proper orientation because it's all right in line. And then down here at the bottom, I just had fun with some oversized jump rings down here suspended from yet another jump ring and just to make kind of a little dangly um, element look. And we used two of those um, just for more layers of detail. So those are the three earrings. Unless there's another question at the workstation, um, I'm going to slide over here to my right and, and uh, finish it off. So are we good on questions, Jen? Um, actually, a couple of people want to know, like, what would you use to seal the clay if you wanted to seal it? Oh, if I wanted to seal it, like, for example, um, if this gold composite leaf got wet, it might tarnish. So what you can do is go back with our Sculpey. Um, we have two glazes. Do we still have two glazes, Jen? Yep. Glossy and satin. Yep. So we have Sculpey Glossy Glaze, which is an air drying paint on glaze. Um, it comes in glossy and satin, depending on the look that, look that you want. And you can seal the clay with our Sculpey product. You can also seal the clay with um, like a paint on clear acrylic that's used for um, in the paint, in the acrylic painting department. That will work as well too. Any other questions about the artwork? <laughs> no, we're good? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, Lindsay, I'm gonna slide back over here so I can tell my people thanks for coming. And I do say thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me. I really appreciate having you in your creative classroom. And so does Michaels, Sculpey, Michaels, me. We're all happy that you were here. So I wanna give you a couple um, items of note. If you do make something from the classroom and you would wanna post it on social media, please use the hashtag, um, hashtag Sculpey. Please use hashtag make it with Michaels. Please use hashtag how do you Sculpey. And then that way we can follow you. I promise you will be as inspired by you as you may or may not have been inspired by us. So thank you for joining us. Please use those hashtags with social media. Please join us again in the future where we'll have more classes um, in the creative classroom. And um, we want to see what, what you guys make. And um, is that it, Jen? Have I left anything out? <laughs> no. Okay. So thanks for joining me. I love you all. And I can't wait to see um, what you've made uh, online. So take care.